Okay, so first, here is uh, just a short uh, introduction to the spin chain. Uh, so if you have just nearest neighbor interaction, you have normal chain, but when you introduce second nearest or next nearest neighbor interaction, denoted here by J2, you actually get a frustrated chain or so-called zigzag chain. So this is a classical um, phase diagram. So just nearest neighbor interaction, you can have antipromagnetic or paramagnetic ordering, but when you introduce J2, so uh, next nearest one, uh, in case of uh, if this uh, interaction is antipromagnetic, you impose frustration. Uh, so for classical spins, actually this results in the spiral order with the pitch angle uh, exactly determined by the ratio between J1 and J2. Um, so here is the uh, phase diagram for uh, spin one half. Yeah, this is a bit more complex. So this is the ratio between J1 and J2 minus sine uh, means that uh, one uh, the nearest neighbor interaction is ferromagnetic. Uh, so again, at zero field, uh, you have chiral magnetic ordering, so chiral correlations. But when you increase magnetization or actually impose uh, external magnetic field, you get uh, quite a lot of rich phases. So basically, you induce uh, so-called spin density waves, uh, phases where you have um, uh, amplitude modulation of magnetic moments. And at even higher fields, you can induce multipolar uh, order. So this means that these are correlations of the uh, magnetic multipoles. So why these are phases are interesting because actually this does not uh, this uh, such phases do not possess a dipolar magnetic moment, and hence they actually uh, they they are very difficult to probe with conventional magnetic probes. So here is just an example of uh, interpretation of how such an order would look like. So you have here this blue part is like a spin uh, density uh, distributed around the director, yeah, which doesn't have the, the it just uh, so somehow. Because of this director, uh, this uh, the such phases are often called spin pneumatic phases yeah, because of the similarity between uh, similarity with uh, liquid crystals. So uh, okay, so this is the theory, and now if we go to the system which we studied, basically this is tellurium vanadate. Uh, the magnetic ions uh, are uh, vanadium four plus with spin one, one half. Uh, you have spin chains where you have nearest neighbor interaction uh, going through oxygen and next nearest uh, has a bit uh, more complex exchange bridge. Uh, actually, you have uh, two phases, uh, two chains along within the one unicell. Uh, so the magnetic properties, first we measured here, this is magnetic suitability. Uh, you can see it has a pronounced maximum with around 12 kelvins. In indicating that you have uh, either a low dimensional uh, or frustrated uh, system. On the other hand, the trivialized temperature, here is the inverse of suitability, is almost exactly zero, which implies that you have uh, interactions of opposite design, so ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic, probably. Uh, here is specific heat measurements, which reveals actually three, uh, three uh, low temperature transitions one at 4.6 seconds and 3.3 .3 and another one at 2.3. Again, more transitions implies that probably there is some frustration in action. And finally, this is magnetization measurement. So at low fields, we observe two magnetic transitions, one at around uh, three Tesla and one around five Tesla. And here is the image of uh, past measurement magnetization. So basically we measure magnetization in magnetic fields up to 25 Tesla, and the saturation comes around 22 Tesla. Uh, so actually, we were able to describe this dependence of stability as well as uh, specific heat with uh, the ratio with the model for a frustrated chain with the, uh, with the ratio of J1 J2 over, uh, over J2 with around minus one. So now if we we want to see where does this put us into the phase diagram. So here is again the summary uh, of our experimental phase diagram. So three uh, magnetically ordered phases, one occurring at 4.6 uh, and the other two at lower temperatures. 
and if you increase magnetic field, this is normalization. So this is just re, uh, rotated magnetization curve. So this is the magnetic field goes up here, and this is magnetization. So you have three phases, and one phase just before saturation uh, at high fields. So why do we use this normalization uh, curve like that? In order uh, now we can actually scale this with the theoretical phase diagram, and indeed we see that there is a reasonable correspondence between the two. So it's probably at the lowest fields and lowest temperatures, we have higher correlations. And then there is this broad phase, which is most likely spin density phase. And there is a potential that this high field phase is actually this uh, enigmatic quadrupolar phase. Uh, on top of that, we observe this narrow phase, which is not experimentally uh, uh, theoretically predicted. So in order to understand this phase, we first performed uh, neutron diffraction at zero field, so in this range. So what we see is actually observed magnetic reflection at incommensurate positions, a uh, position which suggests incommensurate order. Uh, in this middle phase here, actually we observe another transition which is slightly shifted. So this is in uh, reciprocal space. You can see that there is just a tiny variation between the two positions. And at the lowest phase, actually these two uh, reflections uh, collide together. So uh, more extensive measurements actually show that in this high, uh, high temperature phase, we have actually uh, spin density modulation uh, and magnetic moments lying in the AC plane. Uh, but in this intermediate phase, actually, these additional reflections impose there is a second modulation. And moreover, uh, actually, we were able to associate these uh, reflections with the magnetic moments aligned along B, so perpendicular to the chain and perpendicular to, to the initial uh, ordering. So basically, what you get is uh, uh, intertwined, uh, two intertwined spin density waves, one aligned uh, along AC, in the AC plane, and one along B. So if you try to understand this and plot this into a real, into, in a real space, actually, you end up with such a stripe uh, structure with very long moderation period, because these two uh, are actually very close in reciprocal space. Of course, at base temperature, these two modulations collide, and you end up with spiral order. OK, so uh, in order to understand this intermediate phase, we performed inelastic neutron scattering. So here is just an uh, inelastic scattering map uh, for measurements along H, so perpendicular to the chains. And this is our model. So apparently, the two match quite well. So what was the Hamiltonian which we used? Basically, we had uh, J1 and J2 interactions and additional J3 and J4 interactions between the chains. On top of that, we introduced also anisotropy for the mm, strongest J1, J2 interactions. And the actually, the modeling yields uh, the parameters. So the J1 and J2 are basically the same, just opposite signs. So the first one is ferromagnetic. And around an order of magnitude weaker interchain interactions. But what is most surprising, actually, is that uh, these two uh, strongest interaction J1 and J2 are strongly uh, anisotropic. So for the book, for B component, actually the anisotropy amounts roughly to 10 percent. And actually these anisotropies are have different signs. So basically, if you look now uh, the ratio for between J1 and J2 for uh, magnetic moments aligned along A, uh, the, modula uh, the modulation, actually the pitch angle from the classical, so to go to so the pitch angle here, defined uh, with the classical expression, is substantially different uh, for one orientation of magnetic moments than for the other. Yeah? So this is what we believe is the reason for the two different modulations for different type of, uh, uh, from different magnetic, uh, uh, magnetic moments. So the magnetic moment lying along A and the lying along B. Uh, so, Clearly, anisotropy is, is a pronounced effect. So now we wanted to understand also the dynamics of this phase. So we used muon spin relaxation. So basically, what we do in this experiment, we implant the muon in the sample. 
muse powder samples. So basically, one third of the muons is aligned along the local fields, but the rest, so the two thirds of the muons oscillate. So, and this is the representation, actually, how would this look in experiment? So I stress here that the time is logarithmic scale. So basically what you end up is uh, oscillations uh, of the two thirds around the one third uh, of the muons, uh, which are actually already in the, along the uh, local fields. So they don't oscillate. So this is just if you have only one well-determined magnetic field, you have such a nice oscillations. But if you have distribution, a broad distribution or static disorder, uh, actually, you end up with uh, such a curve uh, with uh, only one maximum, and then it uh, averages out into one third tail. Yeah? So basically, we talk here about one third tail. But when you introduce some additional dynamics, so uh, spin dynamics, such this uh, background, so this one third tail decays. Yeah? So this is what you expect in dynamic uh, when you have strong dynamics in the system. So. These are our results. So in the paramagnetic phase, we actually see this slow relaxation. Again, here is time in, uh, uh, in logarithmic scale. So you, in paramagnetic state, observe this slow relaxation uh, expected for paramagnetic uh, phase. Um, but in the order, so in this spin density wave phase, actually we observe uh, one oscillation, but very strongly damped. On top of that, we observe also a decay of one third tail. So there is clearly also some spin dynamics. While this uh, single uh, dip actually implies that we have a broad distribution of local magnetic fields, which is actually expected for incommensurate magnetic orders. So if they are incommensurate, you have a broad distribution of uh, magnetic fields, and this actually results in the spectrum like that. Uh, in the uh, uh, the base temperature, so. Uh, uh, at the base, uh, at the ground state, actually, we observe similar. So, just a few modulations. Again, we have an incommensurate order. So, the uh, oscillations are still really damped. Uh, and also, one uh, third tail, actually, you see it, it reappears with cooling. Yeah? So, at base temperature, zero, uh, it's 40 millikelvins, it's almost flat. Yeah? So, almost no, uh, uh, no fluctuations here. But on the other hand, in the stripe phase, we see a very, very pronounced decay of this one third tail, just in, and the, no oscillations whatsoever. So clearly, uh, this, this phase is completely dynamic. Yeah? So, uh, what we can, so this is the function which we use to model this, uh, the, uh, these results. So basically, you have a constant one third and two thirds cosine. Uh, which oscillates with the uh, magnetic field, with the local magnetic, around the local magnetic field, and some distribution here, some Gaussian distribution, and on top of that, this dynamic term, so relaxation rate lambda and stretch exponent alpha. So, interesting is to look at this stretch exponent, which is here. So, very small value at the base temperature, so uh, around 0 0.2, 0 0.3, suggests that we have very broad distributions of relaxation rates. Similar we have in this uh, spin density phase here, density phase but on the other hand, in the stripe phase, phase, so this uh, intermediate phase, uh, intermediate actually phase, the uh, like, uh, actually this the stretch exponent is almost stretch very close to one. So it suggests that we have very well determined uh, frequency of uh, dynamics in this phase. In this phase. So, uh, Excuse me, Mate, five minutes left. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So this way, that's why we actually decided to model this uh, MSR uh, results uh, in the stripe phase with strong collision approach. Basically, uh, starting point is a, a spectrum uh, in the FDA phase with no dynamics. And on top of that, you introduce uh, one uh, uh, single correlation time, which is actually corresponds to stripe frequency. Uh, so the main frequency oscillations in this phase. So uh, by Fitting all the uh, complete temperature dependence in this type phase, we are actually able to extract uh, the frequency, uh, the temperature dependence of the frequency is in this phase, which gives you this uh, nice result. Actually, we see that uh, the frequency develops from one megahertz up to 10, around up to 10 megahertz. So, implying that this phase is actually dynamic on the megahertz scale, while it, it's, uh, it appears static on the neutron uh, diffraction scale, which is much faster, of course. So we were able 
to model this with free energy description. Basically, we assume that one order parameter develops below the first transition, uh, the second order below the second transition. Uh, this here is the difference between the two uh, wave vectors normalized to the larger difference at uh, the, uh, the second magnetic transition. And actually, this difference goes to zero when uh, the last magnetic transition where the two uh, modulation vectors collide. Yeah. So actually, the lowest coupling term, which clearly the two parameters are coupled, otherwise they wouldn't want to uh, match, they wouldn't want to uh, collide into the uh, spiral order at base temperature. So the lowest uh, allowed uh, coupling term is actually fourth order term like that. So we can plot it actually somehow the size of it is proportional to the square of these two multiplied together. And actually what we get is these uh, uh, triangles, which actually match very nicely with the frequency uh, derived from the uh, from the MSR measurement. So this actually suggests that these low frequency oscillations are somehow a coupled, uh, coupled uh, excitations of the two parameters. So looking at the magnetic order, so spin density wave orders, uh, the, the uh, somehow intrinsic uh, uh, excitations are amplitude ones, which are high frequency uh, excitations. But there is also there are also phasons, so the phase shift of the order, which are low frequency. So because these excitations are uh, appears to be appear to be low frequency, we believe that this uh, uh, the the actually the dynamics in this phase is driven by bound excitations of this type. Uh, so two phasons excitations which are bound together. Okay, so just shortly before I conclude, we also perform Newton diffraction. Uh, in this high fin phase, so these were, uh, experiments were performed in Dresden on hybrid magnet, which is one of the only hybrid magnets allowing for Newton diffractions. Unfortunately, it's already closed. But the main uh, result is actually that we have uh, we observe magnetic reflections in this phase. So it means that the, we do not have a quadrupolar phase here at high uh, at highest fields, but actually it's a complex order uh, magnetic order which probably is a result of this uh, uh, of this um, of this anisotropy which brings us also this stripe phase so now i would just want to skip to the summary so basically this is the phase diagram of our compound and this is a simulation of what the kind of excitations are present in this uh, in this phase in this stripe phase uh, so on the other hand in high fields in high fields we have uh, magnetic order, and uh, this is just an NMR spectrum, which we also measured here, showing that this is a more complex phase uh, compared to the uh, simple SDV phase here. Okay, so thank you for your attention. And so I would also like to thank all the collabor collaborators who helped with this work. And thank you for your attention, and please ask some questions. If I understand correctly, you, you, uh, your consideration is classical, yes or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, your Hamiltonians, which, uh, uh, if I understand correctly, of course, I saw uh, rather simple structure, have rather simple structure, your spin Hamiltonians, yes? With an isotropy, with uh, frustration, but simple. Okay, it's And you can use... Yes, or so, so, uh, something like that, yes. But for such kind of Hamiltonian, no three spin interaction, it's not so important. But uh, for for quantum analog or, or spin anisotropy, yes, uh, such kind of Hamiltonian, as far as understood, can be solved uh, rather simply by the numerically, definitely, by density matrix renormalization group. And you can find not only spectrum, you can find time dependent properties uh, and so on. Thermodynamics, you also can find it. Uh, did you try to do something like that to no, compare no, no, with your classical we results? We are, we are yeah, so basically we are more experimentalist than somehow in the limit what we can do. Uh, we didn't okay, perhaps you can get in touch after the talk. I mean. You can get in touch by email or so. I mean, if you are willing to provide this kind of, let's say, it might be interesting. 